Good day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here. Today we're going to be diagnosing and replacing a stator on a 2009 Yamaha Rhino 700. The symptom was it starts fine, runs fine, and everything's great, and then over time it just doesn't want to start anymore. The battery just doesn't have as much life. And I've already tested the voltage at the battery, and uh, the voltage was uh, low, and then it just discharged as the vehicle was run. And that's a classic symptom of a re voltage regulator rectifier going bad or a stator. In this case, it's the stator, and I'm going to show you how to diagnose that in a minute. The way this is, is uh, designed is the three, the two connectors with the three wires in my hand, they're the connectors for the three-phase alternator, and um, the three-phase alternator is basically, it's a Y style, and there should be no connection between any of those wires and a ground or a common point on the, on the alternator. Now, if we check between uh, common somewhere on the on the engine and any of the three wires that come from the, the current alternator we should get no resistance but I'm going to show you we do here you can just hold that right there we do get a reading on the ohm meter which we should not so I've got my black lead on one of the leads of the alternator and the fact that we get a reading is not good it tells me that there's a short in the original between these wires and and this area right here I'll show you on this alternator now uh, there's no reading. This is a new one. There's no reading, and that's exactly what we would expect. No reading at all between the stator and ground. So that tells me it's faulty. Another way you can tell that it's faulty is measure the voltage on any of these three, uh, three, any two of these three wires while it's running, and you should get um, a an even voltage. Any two wires, you should get the same number of volts if you change the combination of wires and what you will find is on this case when they're faulty you'll get an uneven number of volt uh, uneven number of volts on any two wires so we're going to start it up and i'll show you that now work to get to this stage we took the seat out and we took this cover off and then i disconnected these two connectors ready yep let me start it okay so Got my meter set to AC volts. And I can measure the voltage on any two wires. So I've only got 3.3 .3 AC volts there. Now I'm gonna move to a different set of wires, different combination. I've got 4.8. And I'll go to the second set and 2.4. So, so now that we've diagnosed the problem as the stator, we're gonna put our voltmeter away because that's not needed anymore. And we'll proceed with the disassembly. Okay, we've been at it for quite a while now, probably 45 minutes or an hour. We get the, the box tilted up. We decided it's a good time to change the oil. So from the back, we remove the oil filter that connects right here. While you're down there, you can remove the four bolts that hold the rear inlet oil lines on. So take those bolts out. They are five millimeter hex Allen key heads on them. Also, while you're down there, you can take the five millimeter bolt out that, can, that connects the coolant uh, outlet pipe to the water pump housing, so that's a five mil bolt. Uh, all of those bolts are manageable, they're, you know, it's a bit awkward, but fine. Um, then on this end, remove the coolant hose that heads up to the radiator. You do that by removing the, or releasing the spring clamp, sliding it back, slide the hose out of the way. These two oil lines right here were run to the hard steel oil lines that went to the, the where the oil filter is. And to release those, it's two Phillips screws to remove these clamps. Now there's an upper and a lower hose. It probably doesn't matter which way they go because they just go to an oil cooler up front and whether the fluid goes in one direction or not, I doubt it matters. But we marked the high line, the tallest line with a twist eye and the hard line with the twist eye. So when we put it back together, we'll make sure we get it back the exact same way that it was before. Uh, before we took those lines out, um, we took a water pump drain bolt out on the bottom of the water pump. It's a, I believe, an eight millimeter head. I'd have to check. And there's a little copper washer on the, on, under that bolt. So just make sure you get the bolt and the copper washer out. You drain the coolant. In addition, there's a, I think, 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the engine that's for draining the oil. So we, that's where we are. We get this all drained out. And um, now that all the fluids are, are pretty well drained, 
Um, we're getting to the stage where we're preparing to take the cover off. Um, so one thing I forgot to tell you in an earlier segment is you have to release these connectors, all three of them. Two of these connectors are for the stator and one is for, I think, the crankcase position sensor. The first time those connectors were removed, it was just, it was really difficult. Like I've got average strength man hands and man, I worked at that for a while to get those off. After they've been off, um, I would never put a connector together like that without putting some uh, electrical grease on there so that they just come apart next time and keep water out. So just make sure if you ever get them apart, you put some, some lubricant on there to make sure that they come apart easy next time. Okay, so we're at the exciting stage here. We've removed all the bolts, but to make sure we don't uh, forget which bolts go in which part of the case cover, we drew a little diagram took a nail and poked holes in this cardboard and now all our bolts are in place it's not quite to scale but uh, I'll be able to quite easily figure out how to put all those bolts back in the right hole it's imperative you do that because the bolts are different lengths and if you try and drive a long bolt through a blind hole you'll end up stripping the threads or poking through the case and you don't want to do that this cover uh, you definitely do not want to pry between the cover and the engine block you could put a nick in it may not seal I doubt you'll warp the case, but anyway, it's just, it even it says right in the manual, do not pry, do not pry between the two surfaces. But what's nice is right here, to the right of the starter, there's a uh, little um, lip, and I put a long straight screwdriver right through from this side. There's the other end of the screwdriver, right underneath the starter, and I got a helper to use a rubber mallet and tap that, and look, you can see the crack form here, this opened up. We're not gonna just drive that off without thinking about it a little more carefully because there's a harmonic balancer. No, there's a torque limiter. It's like a, here, here they show it in the, in the manual. It's this little like a gear type of affair. And if the cover comes off straight, I doubt that gear will come off. But if we put a torque on the, uh, put an angle on the gear, when, uh, the case when it comes off, it's liable to grip that uh, torque limiter. So I'm just gonna look underneath to see if there's any other kind of a spot like this I can pull on. And I'll also be able to pull on this wire harness for the, for the uh, stator. Um, and I just want to see if there's anywhere else I can pull to make the cover come off straight from the engine. The other thing the manual says is to remove the oil filler pipe. We're going to try to not do that. And um, the way we're going to avoid that is by taking this wire harness and moving it under the pipe before the cover comes off. It is a magnetic uh, rotor that grips on the stator through magnetic force. So even if this is completely freed up, it's gonna feel like it's seized on there. And uh, if you pull it off a little bit and let go, it's probably gonna snap back. So actually I pried from the bottom and tapped from the top. So a little different technique there. And the cover came free. And what I could see was this gear moving forward. It was migrating forward. And this as well, this whole craziness of stuff here. This is a starter reduction something or other, I don't know. Anyway, this was moving forward with the case and this is moving forward. So as soon as I could get the case far enough out that I could get a screwdriver in here, I used it to push this gear back and push this thing back because I'd rather have all this crap stay on the engine rather than come off in the case. So this I was able to get to go back in, but th this gear rides on this shaft and the shaft came out and stuck in the case. Well, as, it was, as I was pulling the case away, I held my hand on this gear so the gear wouldn't fall. And once the case was moved away, I pulled the shaft, this shaft right here, out of the case, put it through the gear and kind of manipulated things so I could get the, the shaft to go back into the engine block. And, uh, and in that way, everything is contained there. So just be very careful when you take this off. I did not want to have all of this gears, everything crap fall down and have to figure out that puzzle. Now, uh, one thing I would recommend is before you do this job, clean everything really well. I did not do that here. I actually, it's just ironic. I don't have compressed air available right now. So before we did any of this job, if I could go back in time, I would have washed all this very clean and then it just would have been a much better experience. There's some dirt that fell down in there. I'm gonna take some time now with toilet paper and clean that really well. All of this is gonna be just speck and span clean before it goes back together. There, was a couple, there were a couple of dowels that came off uh, with the crankcase. They are just loose. They'll come out if you're not careful. So just make sure you don't lose those. 
And that's the first thing you should check when you take the cover off is make sure you found the dowels because if they're not in the engine block and they're not in the case, then they're on the floor or in my drain bucket down below. So you got to locate those. Now you may very quickly observe that the uh, stator is cooked and there was a catastrophic failure here. What I predict happened was the, the somewhere the stator coils shorted and then the whole time the engine had been running after that event, this area right here was basically a dead short, trying to generate a voltage over a dead short. There could have been very high current in this area and that's what caused the cook. The next steps are to clean the gasket surfaces off of the case, uh, the case, the cover. We're going to take these bolts out and change the stator. Um, there's some process around it because there's a crank position sensor that came with the new stator and so this these bolts also have to come out. You're going to take this rubber sealing grommet here that has to come out. I think there's a bit of sealant that needs to go behind that so we'll take care of that and then we'll uh, we'll come back to you and talk about reassembly. Okay so we're quite a bit further ahead now. We've got the old stator and crank position sensor out and a new one in so to remove it's all it's pretty straightforward one two three four five six seven bolts take them out uh, i don't know what they are in metric i actually had to switch over to my imperial set to get one that fit it was five thirty seconds to fit those clean all of this whole housing with uh with contact cleaner or like a brake cleaner and then blow it dry. Uh, that includes any of these little passages, the places where the dowels will go. You want those clean so that the dowels fit in there nicely. Um, so we did that. We also used contact cleaner in each of the bolt holes to clean any residue out of there. Then I cleaned all the bolts on a wire wheel, on a bench grinder, and then we used medium strength thread locker, as described in the manual, to coat the threads of the bolt. Now, of course, you only need to coat the threads that are going to be immersed in the, the case. Um, and then we tightened the whole thing to 62 inch pounds. I think that's what it said. 62 inch pounds or seven Newton meters using torque wrench. Um, so we've done that. Oh, and we also put some silicone sealant behind the grommets. And just before we put it on the, the uh, engine, we're gonna just smear a tiny amount right there as well. The dowels we took out of here and put on the engine. And uh, so there's a dowel here and a dowel down at the bottom. <clears throat> and we're gonna take the gasket and put it on those dowels. And you'll notice these gears are all pushed towards the engine, that's great. Even this shaft right here, pushed towards the engine. And I think we'll be ready to reinstall. You don't need to have bolts case bolts in your hands when you're trying to reinstall because it will self-center on these dowels. Um, and the magnetic force of the rotor is probably going to suck the cover in anyway. So basically you're going to do your best to get it as aligned as you can and then it will get it will get drawn in. Make sure there isn't any leftover gasket. We had quite a time scraping all the gasket surfaces on both the cover and the block. So the only trick to it in the manual is uh, there's a a shaft that comes out of the oil pump right there and it fits into the water pump impeller and as you're putting the cover on it helps to rotate the water pump um, from the outside of the cover ever so slightly um, you may get lucky and it just goes on but it probably helps to look at the orientation of that oil pump it's like this so we're going to take the water pump impeller and make its shaft aligned and then when we put the cover on we may just have to micro adjust the pump impeller Yep, so there's the water pump impeller, so I can adjust this a little bit and um, it'll be easy where the water pump housing is off to adjust the actual, uh, I'll show you, to grip that by the impeller and just rotate it so that this aligns with the oil pump shaft. If you don't do that, uh, the cover won't fit on properly. It'll be out near the bottom and you know there'll be something interfering and you'll be unsure. Just try, don't force anything, just try to uh, Rotate the water pump impeller and it should snap in place. Okay, folks, so we're looking pretty good now. We got the uh, alternator cover on the engine. We rotate, or we uh, torqued up all the bolts in a crisscross pattern, 88 inch pounds. We, when we did that, we had to just wiggle the water pump just ever so slightly to engage with the oil pump shaft, and then it all pulled in. Now, I will tell you, the manual says don't tighten the bolts down if the cover doesn't fit. 
flush with the case. But in our case, the grommet where those, those wires came through, that rubber grommet, was protruding so far from this case that the case would actually teeter-totter on that grommet. And the old one was like that when we pulled it out. It protruded from the case a little bit. So I just took my hand and pushed it, and I was able to compress that rubber grommet almost as much by hand as it needed to be compressed to be flush. So I knew that it would be okay if we tightened the bolts down. So anyway, um, just make sure that if, if you're pushing at the top, it goes in all the way at the bottom, and at the bottom it goes in all the way. That tells you that all your gears and dowels are aligned, and if it teeter-totters in the middle, it's that rubber grommet. Okay, then we put the water pump cover back on, tighten those three bolts up to 88 inch pounds, return this hose to its proper location with a clamp. Um, we In the bottom of the water pump housing, can't really see right now, but there's, a, there's this big cooler line, that, if that's rubber, it goes into a steel line that heads into the bottom of the water pump housing. We took the O-ring out of the housing and put it on the steel tube that's gonna go into the housing and then tighten that bolt up 88 inch pounds. Then we put the four, uh, no, no, the two oil, uh, oil cooler lines that go to the back of the engine with one, two, three, four bolts that hold that in, all 88 inch pounds, and snapped those lines into this bracket and then reconnected the hoses. So that's got you all caught up. I did, I did connect the uh, electrical connector for the crank pickup and that will allow us to start the engine. And we're gonna start it and I'll measure the AC voltage on these three wires and hopefully we'll see the uh, target idle voltage, which would be an equal voltage, but much higher than the three, four volts we saw before. Now I would not want to run it very long with that disconnected because while you're doing that, the alternator is driving, is creating a high, high voltage um, because there's no current draw off the alternator. And I wouldn't think it's fine for a quick test, but I wouldn't want to drive it like that. Oh, we put the oil drain plug back in. And I also put the water pump drain bolt, water pump cover drain bolt back in. I did that when it was on the bench. Okay, so since the last update, what we did was we filled the radiator with coolant right to the top. Takes a while for the air to bubble out of it. We filled the expansion tank to the halfway mark, which is actually where it says full. So halfway up this tank is actually full. To do that, it was a bit tricky. We take the cap off and we put a, a short funnel in there and then we put a long funnel up top here uh, we just made it out of cardboard and the cardboard funnel dropped fluid into the big plastic funnel that was down there and that's how we filled it up. It helps to have two people and somebody watching this with a flashlight behind it. So after we get those topped up, we pulled off the water pump housing bleed screw, bleed bolt. So we pulled that out until uh, coolant squirted it out of there. And then of course when you've uh, primed that, tighten that bolt up and then there's another bolt right on the side of the thermostat housing, same thing. You can loosen it and um, no fluid actually came out here because the front end was a little too low in this garage that might not be level. So the manual says to jack up the front end until fluid comes out here. So we did that. Each time we bled a little bit, the radiator had to be topped up. And so you tighten this back up. Both of those bleed screws were 88 inch pounds. And then um, we had Filled it up with oil and the dipstick for, uh, I think it, we put two liters in. We're gonna check it after the machine's run for a while and warmed up and, and so on, but uh, two liters took care of it. And it's a fascinating thing, I've never seen this before. They actually want you to bleed the pressurized oil system when you change the oil. And so to do that, there's this bolt right here that you loosen, don't take it out, but you just loosen it two, two turns or so start the engine and when you see oil squirt out around the threads stop it tighten it 88 inch pounds so let's start it up so at fast idle we're getting about 34 at slow idle we're getting right just under 30 and when we check the other phases we were getting all a balanced output each of them about 30 volts now uh, some um, some types of systems when you run them when you go to diagnose them you have to rev them up to see now I'm going to show you uh, but this one we're just going to test it idle so here we're going to throw this on DC volts and this battery is currently running at 12 volts right on and is the key on turn the key on but don't start it 
Yeah, so we're 11.75 volts with the key on not starting. So now I'm gonna connect our new stator windings and we'll redo that test. And I'm expecting 14 and a half volts or so. Okay, so that was just these fittings being connected right here. Now we'll start it up, do our final measurement. Yep, go ahead and start it. So we're at 12.2 volts, 12.3, 12.4. So what's happening right now is this alternator is charging a, a discharge battery. If we run this for a while, there were 12.6, so it's climbing quickly. I'd be quite confident that we're gonna see 13 and a half volts after this battery's been charged up. Okay, so we've had it running for about uh, 10 minutes or so. There it is, just over 14.1 volts, maybe around, right around 14.1. So that's fine, anywhere 13 to 14 and a half is good. And uh, it tells us that we've fully resolved the problem. I thought we had a leak around the water pump housing, but it was really just residue from uh, from before we started our, you know, leak test and let it idle. What I should have done is wipe the whole thing down clean first and then let it run for 10 minutes. I never thought to do that. And then when it came out and there was residue on it, I thought it was leaking, but I've since wiped it down and we don't see any new leaks. So I think we're good. So this is the uh, end of the do-it-yourself stator replacement. For this 2009 Rhino 700, all in all, we were about 100 bucks for the part off of Amazon, 60 bucks or so for oil and filter and sealant and other stuff. So for a couple hundred bucks, we got this thing rolling and charging again. If you like my do-it-yourself videos, please subscribe to my channel.